The journal was launched in March of 2014. We're in our second year of production. And in addition to not only review articles that, are, that span palliative care and survivorship, and also original articles that are submitted from ind individual investigators, we also have some very exciting initiatives that we hope will provide educational resources for the neuro-oncology community. In addition, uh, some of these aspects include the presentation of specific histological um, areas of brain tumors. So for example, the first issue, and this is being led by Derek Johnson, uh, is on glioblastoma. Not only glioblastoma, but also in the elderly population. And how do we manage those patients? What's the current evidence of how we need to take care of our patients? The next um, topic will be on meningioma. Because we know now, based on some of the information uh, epidemiologically, that meningioma is actually the most common primary brain tumor that exists. And although the majority are benign, there are about 30% of cases where these tumors are actually more aggressive. And how do we manage those patients in terms of surgery, radiation, and now targeted therapies? So in addition to that initiative, we also want to highlight quality of life. Not only the aspects of taking care of patients and their families, but how do we do research in this area? And Dr. Martin Tafforn and Terry Armstrong are really key in leading this effort to provide articles that talk about the educational aspects of when you want to design a clinical trial or when you want to look at not only the secondary endpoints of quality of life, like how are patients doing with the therapies, but also are there ways that we can improve on quality of life and how do we design those types of trials that address those very um, specific areas. And then lastly, any article, whether it's scientific or clinical research based, has to talk about statistics. Uh, this is something that gives us an idea of how confident that we are that the results that we're presenting actually make sense and should be applied to our patients uh, in the clinic. And this is one area that I think everybody is very, very, uh, it, it's almost like very difficult for, to understand what, is, what do these statistics mean? What do these numbers mean? And how do we interpret it? How do we convey information about statistics to our patients, for example, in terms of prognosis? and expectations of risk. And so Annette Molinaro um, has, has agreed to head up these particular articles called Statistics for the Clinician. And it's all about how we interpret what we're reading in the literature on a day-to-day -day basis, but more importantly, how do we convey that information so that our patients understand what these numbers mean in the clinic.